With Housecraft, you can make detailed buildings in minutes. It's a geometry node setup for creating realistic buildings, destructions, and even a whole village right inside Blender. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this scene using Housecraft and a bunch of free assets. So here is the Housecraft Blender file with this little building and two properties on the right side which is one is for modifiers and another one is for materials which bunch of color IDs. So from the modifiers we have an option called original geometry on and off. So by turning this on we have the actual geometry which is like a default cube. And obviously by changing this cube we are going to change the building. So I'm going to go to edit mode and I'm going to select this face and extrude this a couple of times. And now if I turn off this, you can see the building and I'm going to do another extrusion from here from the edit mode. And then I'm going to make the roof as an angled roof to make this. It's actually pretty easy. Go to edit mode and you can turn this on to see the edges. So I'm going to select these edges and also you can change the lighting to studio to see this better. So let's go closer and I'm going to move this up. Also, I'm going to turn this off to see the actual building. So you can move this up from Z axis and here is your angled roof. Next thing I'm going to do is making this extrusion as a porch. So you can go to original geometry and select this face and press Ctrl plus to grow your selection to select all these faces. And then from the right side, you have this blue color ID, which is for Porsche. So select this and hit assign. If you go back, you can see here is our porch. So also for here, we can make this as an angled roof. So that is pretty easy. You can either go here or from here, you can select the edge and move this down. If you can see this, because actually you can see, if you go to wireframe and if you turn on the X-ray view, you can see and select the edges. So I'm going to move this down and it's going to change the roof like so. All right. Also, the next thing I'm going to do is deleting this face. So I'm going to select this face and delete. Also from here, I'm going to make another face and make the door so i'm going to go to original geometry and select these edges press f to make a face and then i'm going to select the door from here and now here we have the door but sometimes if i go to material preview it seems like the door is from the wrong side that's because you need to flip your normal so i'm going to select this face which is we can select this from the original geometry as well and then press alt n and flip the normal and now the door is correct so i'm gonna do more changes and this time i'm gonna make these as awning so press ctrl plus to grow the selection and here i'm gonna select the awning and hit assign So I'm going to select this face and I'm going to delete this. And then I'm going to make more faces inside. Like so. Also, I'm going to select this face and make this as default. And this one, we can make this as window. And this one, I'm going to make this as door. Also, like before, we need to flip these normals. Also for here, I'm going to extrude this one as well. So let's go to original geometry and select these vertices. Press J to join them together. Also, we can delete this edge and then select this face and extrude this like before. Ctrl plus to grow your selection and again select the blue one for porch and hit assign and here is our porch and I'm going to select this edge and move this down like so and for here 
we need to make a face. Also from modifiers we have a bunch of options. I'm gonna start with ladders because as you can see the ladder goes inside our building. So if you open this we have an option called ladders offset. So if you increase this you can move this out from the building and we can easily fix this. All right and also we can go for windows. So we have an option called random windows. So if you turn this on you can have the windows distributed in a white or default color ids so for example for this one we made this purple which is for window so this is actually we have the window but for this one for this white faces we can um, turn on this and randomly we can have the uh, window for these faces as well so we can change the types and for the door we can change the type as well and the lamps and the chimney which is pretty obvious and also for the chimney we can change this and also we can turn this off and we can go to edit mode and for example i'm gonna select this one and make this yellow which is for chimney and hit assign and now our chimney is here so i'm gonna turn on the random damage I really like this one. So I'm going to increase the damage. Here we have no inner walls. So you can turn on the inner wall. So that is better. And we can turn on the damage for the inner wall as well. And now as you can see these particles are floating in the air. So we can fix this. I'm going to make a plane and increase the size and i'm gonna press m and move this to a new collection so you can call this whatever you want i'm gonna call this as trash and then select the building and down here go to trash and select that collection here and then these particles goes on the ground also you can turn off this collection also another cool thing about this is the proximity damage add an empty for example a sphere I'm gonna scale this up and I'm gonna move this here. Then here under the proximity damage, I'm gonna turn all this on and I'm gonna select this object that empty. And if you move this into the building, look what happens. This is pretty awesome. You can control the damage like so. And the water strikes an IV, which is also another cool feature. If you increase the water strikes, as you can see, here is the effect of the water on your walls. And if you turn on the IV, as you can see, here is some plants growing and you can increase the density and the height. And also you can randomly distribute this. You can actually change the seed of the distribution of your IV. Other options for exporting this. Actually, you can export this for render engine like Unreal Engine, Unity, or going to Marmoset Toolbag or Sketchfab or more. So you can continue working on this on other uh, software as well. So the Housecraft links is below in the description if you want to check it out. And now let's see how I use this to make the scene and how I made the full environment. So I tried different things, different models, and I kind of like this one, but I thought I can change the building to a church. So I changed that and tried different lighting, adding gravestones and more details, and I ended up with this one. And with a little color correction, this is the final result. This is the main building. I made this from three parts so this is the main one you can see the original geometry which is so simple i extruded this part for the awning and i added this one orange color id and also this one for the door these two for the windows and that's it 
So as you can see, this is super simple. Also this one, I could make this one from the base model, but I thought I can make it separate from the base, keep this easier to create. So if you see the original, I made these faces blue for the porch and also for the tower. Uh, also, this is super simple as well, as you can see. And there's nothing special, just the white color IDs. And I deleted two faces from two sides. And I modeled a church bowl. Didn't add any details here because actually this is uh, in the shadow and you can see anything so i didn't add any details just a simple bill here here is a cross and another object under that and that's it this is actually the main building i've downloaded some assets from polyhaven a tree model which i scatter around the scene a dead tree trunk some rocks, a grass collection, and three PBR materials. And of course, all the assets are in the description. So this is the ground and the grass on it. Actually, we could delete this part because uh, we can see this. If I go to camera view, as you can see, if I select ground or the plane, and if I go to edit mode and I select these, this is the, uh, the polys I see and the grass on it so if i go back these polys actually are kind of like useless you know because we can see them so i could delete these and i think this is more optimized scene but um i kept that anyway and this plane has a pbr material on this for the ground and has a particle system for the grass so i'm going to show you how you can create this so you have your plane first i'm gonna add the um, pbr material so let's go to shading add a new material you need to go to uh, edit preferences and from the add-on you need to search for node wrangler so select the principal bscf and hit ctrl shift t and then look for the folder which in here is forest leaves and go to textures and select all and import the textures and here is simply your texture so you can go here and under mapping under scale you can scale this up uh, to make this smaller so don't worry about the repetition because we can actually see this because we are going to adding the grass so for the grass we are going to layout and uh, go to file it happened and this time go to grass and select these uh, blender file and then go to collection so we have a bunch of options here the lod0 means the model with the all details the high poly model and lod2 means less poly less details and because we are going to scatter this on the scene uh, we better uh, keep the low poly model and of course because the grass are in front of the camera and it's kind of get blur and we can't see any detail of that the lod2 i think is better choice so as you can see, we added the collection of the grass. So here from Outliner, we can just hide this. And then we can select the plane, go to particles, add new particle system and select the hair. And then under render, go to render as and select the collection and select the grass collection. Here, as you can see, we have the grass, but it's small. So you can increase the scale from here and let's go to material preview. So you can increase the scale and also you can change the scale randomness to make it a little uh, randomized in size. And if you go uh, and see this from the top view, as you can see, it is so artificial and um, we can change the rotation. So turn on the advance and turn on the rotation. And here you can change the phase and randomize phase to make it more random. And also from the emission, you can increase the number. I'm going to I'm gonna change this to 5000. And here is your grass. And same thing with the tree. You can go to file, append, and then go to your tree folder. Select the blender file and collection. And here I'm going to select the tree and just import your tree you can select this and move and something is here which you can hide 
and then you have two objects here or this collection and then you can uh, copy this around your scene so here i just scatter the tree around the scene rotate the model change the size to get some variation and i've added the dead tree trunk here in foreground in front of the camera and bunch of rocks one here as you can see and two in the mid ground and also we have two gravestone here with the stone material and in the shading just for this one i added hue saturation value for the base color and just changing the value to make this one a little darker also i've added the metal material to the bill and to the cross and the cross has the lower value to become more darker for the background i use this image from marita kavalashvili and this is from the unsplash.com and the link is in the description to import this image, press Shift A, Image, Mesh Plane. Then select your image and here it is. So I imported that into the scene and placed this in front of the camera, just like this. And in the shading, I just tweak the hue, saturation and value to match the color of the background to the rest of the scene. Here is before and here is the after color correction about the camera setting i put 50 millimeter for focal length turn on the depth of field and select the main housecraft object for the focal object and then 0.5 for f-stop number for the aperture also for the lighting i've added a sunlight with this angle and with this setting uh, 20 for the strength and 5 for the angle and I wanted a shadow from here around this foreground and for this trees and I did something I don't know if it's a dumb idea or not but it kind of works for me I added a huge plane here with a hole inside and actually that works so if I delete this as you can see I just lost that desired shadow but if I go back, I have the perfect shadow for the foreground. So I've added a huge box around the model with the principled volume shader and with the density of 0.005 to add a little bit of fog to the scene. And finally, I thought it could be great if I have some light on the building. So I added a spotlight with the settings. And also I've added a plane in front of that spotlight with some hole on it to make the light more interesting. And if I delete this plane, as you can see, the light is so strong. And if I go back, we have light for some areas and I think that is more interesting. And for the render, I just use cycles, GPU compute, and actually there's nothing special here. And denoising and using AGX and medium high contrast. And after that, on the compositing, I use the lens distortion and check the fit and little amount of dispersion to getting this kind of effect for your final result. And then I'm gonna save this as the open EXR file. And then I go to Photoshop for a little amount of editing, which there's nothing complicated. You can do this in the compositing in Blender as well so that's it for this video don't forget to check out the housecraft from the link in the description thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i will see you in the next one